y'all. It is the weekend and my whole family's coming. My kids and grandkids, whole family wise. It's 10 of us. And so I'm gonna cook us some fried pork chops. I got this big old pack. It's a nine pound pack from Sam's Club for $16.75. I thought that was pretty good in there. A nice thick cut. Um, I see 10 on top. I don't know how many is under the bottom, but um, I'm gonna get these washed and patted dry and then I'll get back on here. Y'all see this big old pile of pork chops? We're gonna get them seasoned and then we're gonna dip them and get them ready to fry. Um, I'm gonna put a little salt on first of all. Try to spread them out. Y'all know I've washed them and I patted them dry with paper towels. These are nice, thick cut um, pork chops I got there at the Sam's Club. I'm, I'm very pleased with them. Yes, I am. There we go. Okay. Get me some salt going. I don't want to get some on each side, okay? So I'm going to flip them over after this. My kiddos are bringing their kids to spend the night, the grandbabies, the ones that are available. I'm putting pepper now, fresh ground pepper. And they're going to get up and go to church with us in the morning, John and me. And then we're, well, we're all going to go to church and then we're going to eat lunch together. So we're just having a family weekend, aren't we? Onion powder is what I'm sprinkling on there now, guys. Yes. You can season them however you want to. We just like all these little things. And this is garlic, granulated garlic. Sometimes I have garlic powder, just whichever one. Just a light sprinkling, okay? Smoked paprika, y'all knew I was gonna pull that out, didn't you? <laughs> right? Okay, guys, I'm gonna flip these over. I'm gonna do the other side and I'll come back. Okay, next step, I'm gonna make a wet, dip, I guess, and a dry dip for breading. So my wet one is just going to be a couple of eggs and some buttermilk. So I've got a couple of my fresh eggs from the girls. And I see I dropped a little bit of a shell in there. You can use your shell to dip your shell out and it actually sticks to the shell like a little magnet. It's a fabulous little tip in case you drop a little piece of shell. It's fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. Okay, two eggs, some buttermilk. Buttermilk's nice and tangy and it's a real good base bread for our pork chops. And then some Louisiana hot sauce, just a little bit. Nothing that makes your pork chops hot, but it just gives it a little flavor, good flavor. So that's all that that is. It's not gonna make it hot, I promise. You saw I just put just a little bit. Then I take a fork and I break my eggs and I'll just mix this around real good. And splash it on the counter like I do, make a mess. <laughs> I got up this morning, I wanna apologize for my hair. I did my Bible study and drank my coffee and I got all dressed and curled my hair good and then I went outside to do my chickens and feed them. And it's so humid here in Louisiana. It's warm, it's not snowing, but it's so humid my hair just said, so I said, okay, well, I'm out of time. <laughs> so that was that. Um, and I've been in here vacuuming and mopping and getting ready for my family. So I apologize for my hair. Yes, I do. Um, now in this second breading container, I'm using pie plates. They work so good for this. I'm gonna put a, some flour, just all purpose flour. I'm sure you could use self-rising too if that's all you have. Just some. I'm not doing any kind of measurements, y'all see that. If I run out of breading, I'll just make me up some more, but I'm hoping this will be enough. And I'm gonna sprinkle just about a quarter cup of the cornmeal in there, just gives it a little bit of a crunch, different, different, a little different. Okay guys, now in the buttermilk and egg, I, that, that's got flavor with that hot sauce. But I'll, I keep a layer of flavor in each step so you don't lose out or it doesn't draw out the flavor. And we lightly flavored our um, pork chops. You saw we just sprinkled, you know, just a light sprinkling. So I'm gonna do a little bit more salt in here, just a sprinkling, so they won't just be tasteless. Some more smoked paprika, just a sprinkle. Nothing major, some more onion powder. Just a little tad sprinkle. Just like that, nothing crazy. 
and some more fresh ground pepper. Or you could just use whatever pepper you have. And now we need to mix that around. And I'm not going to play like I keep one hand dry and one hand wet and do all that fancy stuff. I'm, you know, I'm not going to play like I do that because I don't. I get all in here and I get messy. Let me slide my pork chops that we seasoned up ready for this. And I'm going to use my same pan and I'm going to begin to, I'm going to dip it in my egg. Can y'all see all this? Let me get this down here. Let me get this down here off of me and on these pork chops. After all, they are the star right now, aren't they? There we are, guys. And I'm going to dip it in my egg and buttermilk mixture. And then press it into my flour and cornmeal mixture. Seasoned nicely. Then just shake it a bit and start stacking them right back in this cookie sheet that I have them in, okay? Just like that. And I know my fingers are getting dirty. You know what? That's why God gave me running water up in this house. Yes, he did. And I'm going to use it and appreciate it. But I am pushed for time. I wanted to clean up my house before everybody came. <laughs> so now I've got a little over an hour to get cooked before everybody shows up. And y'all know I'm going to cook big, so we got to get busy. We can't be dilly-dallying around, can we? Y'all just see what I'm doing. I'm sure y'all got it, right? I'm going to come back, guys, when I'm done, and we'll get these pork chops frying. Start preheating your, um, put this back up. Start preheating your uh, grease over there on the stove. Um, I've got peanut oil, but I'll use vegetable oil or corn oil or whatever oil you want. Just one with a high smoke point. And start preheating it on medium high over here by the stove. We'll show you. I've got our pork chops that we breaded right here under, y'all. <laughs> y'all hold them in your lap. And I put the extra breading, if any's left, I kind of pile it on top. Because when I pick one up, I'm going to show you what I do. Like if I pick him up to fry, I'll just kind of shake off the excess. That way, if some places look like it's absorbed all the breading, you can kind of dip it around on there. So... I don't throw that away till I absolutely know I don't need it anymore. Another thing you can do to check your oil, um, it's on medium high, like I say, is I'll take a little bit of that breading and I'll just kind of drop it in there and you see it immediately start frying. And then you know that it's ready, okay? And these pork chops, whoa, I touched the side of that. That was nice and warm. These pork chops are very thick. Hoping I can show you how thick they are. So instead, I normally will let them go maybe about, you know, your little breakfast pork chops, you can let them go about three minutes on each side. These are so thick, I'm going to let them go at least like four minutes on each side. And then they'll be ready. You'll see them. They'll be golden brown and bubbly and really nice. I've got me this little pan to put them in. It's got that little drain rack down there I like to do, and I keep this in my oven on warm. Keep my pork chops warm so I can get everything else done. I'm going to let these go. I'll let y'all see what they look like um, when I take these up and put the next ones in. But i got to get over here because I'm peeling potatoes. i got to make cream potatoes. Y'all see these? Don't that look good? Golden brown. Yes, I'll put them up here on my tray to drain. I wanted to talk to y'all a little bit. You hear how you can hardly hear him frying anymore? That means he's good. Um, these went three and a half to four minutes on each side, okay? But you can hear them because they'll start off frying like they're just mad little pork chops. Just mad, mad, mad frying. Y'all see that just bubbling? And it'll settle down after a while. And that's when you can flip him. And then when he settles down again, He's done. So you just gotta listen to him. There we go. Alright y'all, let me get back to my potatoes. Okay guys, they settled back down. He has. You see he's thinner. And golden brown. I'm gonna put him in his draining pan. He's a little thicker. And he's still he's still a little bit angry. He's still frying a little bit angry. So I'm gonna let him go just another minute, maybe. 
on each side because he settles down for my next thing. I'll show you all the other stuff I got going. I've got corn. Can y'all see the corn? I have lima beans. They're like a green butter bean. And then I have my potatoes I've been peeling and I got them boiling right now because I'm going to make cream potatoes and we'll have gravy. And if I've got time, i got to do sweet tea. So if i got time, I'm going to do, do dirty rice. If I don't have time and everybody gets here, well, this will be plenty. <laughs> Okay guys, I got my cream, I got my potatoes boiled and I did salt the water pretty generously. I put about two teaspoons so that your salt gets into your potatoes because you want to do that. And I love to do my potatoes with this little whisk attachment on here. It really does them up good and my grandmother did that and it reminds me of being in my grandmother's house. I put a whole stick of butter, mine's unsalted, and I'm going to start Mixing this around on low. Get this up here so y'all can see me and not be talking to my neck. <laughs> like that. This smell and the sound of this motor reminds me of being at my grandmother's house. She would make cream potatoes every time we went over there. That was us grandbaby's favorite. And it just reminds me of her so much. I feel like I'm in her kitchen smelling this and hearing this. <laughs> and it's a good thing. I added a whole stick of butter and now I'm just adding some milk till they get creamy. And I let this run several minutes and it gets my potatoes real fluffy and creamy. Just the consistency that you like them is all you need to do. We've got all our um, corn, corn, corn chops. No, not corn chops, Amy. Pork chops. We got those all fried. I'll show y'all. Let's see here. I'm going to go put them in the oven to warm. Don't they look good? <laughs> that was some heavy duty frying. Yes, it was. I need to take a picture of them first. So I'll get a picture of them. I'll get those in the oven. I'll get these creaming. And I, I just used some store bought rolls to rise, those yeast rolls. And I just buttered the tops of them. I'm about to slide them in there too. So I'll see y'all later. Y'all be sure and taste your potatoes too and see if you need to add some salt. Those are pretty good, especially since I'm going to do some gravy on them as well. But I'm going to add just a little bit of salt. Just a little bit. A sprinkling. Bryson, did you get in the hot tub, baby? <laughs> Everybody's gotten here, so it's getting busy. I'll be back, y'all. With our pork chops, we've got those cream potatoes, and so we're going to make some gravy. Yes, we are. Can y'all see that pot that we fried our pork chops in? Y'all, that was a cast iron pot at one time, all pretty, and I fried in it and kind of stained him, so I just use him for that. But it fries so well because it's nice and deep and doesn't splatter everywhere. I'm going to use some of that pork chop grease. And I'll even dig and get some of that stuff on the bottom, that sediment, which is that flour, that breading we put on there. I'm going to put it over here in this hot cast iron skillet. That was about a quarter cup, and I might do just a tiny little more pinch. Since I got my whole family here, I want to have plenty of gravy. I've got my fire on under here. Some of that sediment on the bottom helps to flavor this really, really well. There's a big chunk of it. I think I'll get that out. Wouldn't hurt anything, but I'm going to get it out. There we go. Okay, so we've got hot grease going over in this hot skillet. And i got my flour. And I'm going to put just about that same amount of flour. So if you put a quarter cup of grease, put you about a quarter cup of flour. And, of course, I eyeball it. You will after a while if you've not done it before. See how it's already starting to cook and fry in there, and that grease has already got a nice color on it, doesn't it? So this will speed up our roux. Our roux we are making. Yeah, that's going to be just about perfect. You'll see how it does, like, let's see here, guys. 
kind of leaves a trail when you do that and it takes it a minute to peel back in that means you've got a good ratio but if if you're not doing done it before just measure exact amounts of oil and exact amounts of flour and you'll be fine and that is all purpose flour okay <laughs> it's all purpose flour I got my rolls in the oven I'm gonna check these y'all watch my roof for me They need about three more minutes, so we're good. I'm just going to keep browning this, guys, and then when I get through, something I do, I always do with gravy, I add a broth instead of water if I'm just going to do a brown gravy. So you can do chicken broth or you can do beef broth, and this is delicious in here. And it will change your gravy. Um, I was raised up just making gravy with water right here and talk to y'all y'all see i don't put my hair up <laughs> but um i was raised just making gravy with water and that's that's the recipe but if you put a broth a chicken broth or a beef broth um it will elevate your gravy elevate it and you'll never go back to plain water so that's my little tip for the day on gravy okay if you're not already doing it i bet a lot of you are i bet y'all are so I'm going to keep on until this browns just a little more. Alright, y'all see that's a nice brown. It browned a bit. It was already good and brown using that grease we'd already fried our pork chops in, wasn't it? So I'm going to add this beef broth now. I may not all add this whole box. I'll just see. I'm going to stir it around. That makes it angry, doesn't it? Oh, it smells good. See how it's thickening up already. So yeah, I'm gonna go on and add this whole entire box so we'll have plenty of gravy. And I wanna say to y'all, if you ever add your broth and then you think it's too runny, and you think, oh no, I messed up, you have not, just let it cook for a while and it'll cook back down. So that is uh, not a problem whatsoever. See how this one's a little bit loose right now? Well, I'm going to let it cook down and it's going to thicken right back up, okay? That way I didn't waste any of that and it'll be good and flavorful. One thing I like to add to my um, gravy is a little bit of pepper and then just a little bit of salt. Um, I'm not going to add any salt because I've got that uh, beef broth with salted beef broth, so I'm good. But if I didn't have salted beef broth, you might taste it and see um, if you need to add a little salt to it. Okay, guys, we're going to bring it to a boil. Y'all see that? It's come to a nice rolling boil. So now I'm just turn it down on low, and it is ready for supper, isn't it? You see how it thickened right back up. I just let it cook down for a little bit. It is perfect. Hey guys, it's all ready and my family's all here and I'm so thankful for that. John's going to ask the blessing for us and we're going to eat, aren't we? Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this time with my family. Lord, the blessing that it is all being well and safe. Lord, I just ask you to bless this meal. Just be with us, Luke. God, direct us, Lord. Forgive us when we fail you. Please be with the people in our prayers tonight, Lord. Be with our nation. We love you so much and thank you for the day. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> All right, y'all. We're about to we're about to eat. Oh no. Just because you and I get them squeezing each other's hands. <laughs> it's a Girls, what y'all been doing? Y'all been in the hot tub while we were cooking, wasn't you? Yeah. <laughs> that was fun. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey Holly baby This is one of my grand dogs She rode to grandma's house today Yes she did Yeah you come to me Mies Yeah Holly girl Yeah Holly come here and let me see baby Ashley Y'all get your plates Y'all help yourselves <laughs> Y'all see my silly son He's a goofus Turn her around let's get Ashley Hi, sweet girl. Hey, darling. You want a pork chop? Come on. <laughs> you want a pork chop? I know. I know it. It won't be long. You'll get one. To make it warm. Yes, it does. Come here and say hi to everybody. I got what I need. Everybody else is eating. I just got what I need right here. Tick-toos. Tick-toos. I need a disinfectant wipe. You need a disinfectant wipe? 
Had he been growing since Christmas when we read together so early? Are you sleepy? She kind of sleepy. <laughs> I don't think they heard you, Tyler. William, we're a few pork chops down. Yes, we are. Let me. Let's go get the girls. Here's the brand dog. Holly, girl, she's sleeping. <laughs> you don't want to be seen in y'all swimsuits. Okay, you can look at me. <laughs> <laughs> Girls, are y'all having good supper? Yeah. <laughs> good deal. Y'all gonna spend the night and go to church with us in the morning? Yeah. yeah. I have yes. my Bible. <gasps> wonderful. Wonderful. It's it's Terrific. Actually not, it's actually not Let's very go very see what's time. in here. Hi, Daddy. <laughs> There's Daddy. I'm running like Here we are. The girls wanted to dine alone without all the rest of us tonight, so they're in there. And here's the rest of us. Katie. <laughs> Amanda! <laughs> Can y'all tell everybody loves me to feel <laughs> Bryson, do you love it? <laughs> yeah, I'm a Let's see, see if I can get over there and get Blake and, and John. There we go. All right, Tyler, I'm going to get out of your way, baby. Okay, guys. Time for me to fix my plate. Yes, I can't wait till I feed you a pork chop. <laughs> Bye, y'all.